Good afternoon, viewers. Once again, we are back with you. This is the Church of Nazarene, Baba Jessica Strait Family Forum. Back with you again. We have been with you since last November. And of course, next month will be a year that we were coming to your homes. We appreciate you sharing with us on CBC TV 8. We, of course, we thank um, CBC for partnering with us in this project. And I, and I suppose I have to say ministry. It's not just a project. Uh, last program, we, were, we had a pleasure of having Dr. Lord with us as we looked at the whole idea of coping with the COVID-19 virus. And in this program today, we want to look at the whole vaccination process. Of course, this is one way of handling it. And I trust that you would call a friend, call a family member, or a fellow church member, if you wish, um, to share with us. Because one thing we are sure of, there's lots of misinformation out there. And you don't want to make decisions based on myths. So we are trying in this program to present to you some facts. I trust that you would share with us in this program today. Father, we thank you again for this opportunity that we can connect with our Babylon and public and those who join with us on Sunday evenings at five o'clock. We pray that as we would share today, again on this very um, relevant topic of COVID-19 and how we cope with it, particularly as we focus on vaccination, how important is it? We pray that you will guide us as well. Lord, we know that you're the all-knowing God. You know you're the all-seeing God. And uh, we are glad that we can listen to you and, and uh, in our prayer and our wisdom. We're glad indeed for persons like Dr. Lord and others who've made themselves available um, education-wise and have delved into these things. Health period. And we believe, even as Christians, yes, that God is able, Lord, that you are able to help us. We believe that you can help us through medicine as well, as you use um, Dr. Lord and other persons and the nurses in the community and so on to help to heal our land. So we thank you for them today. We really want to thank you today. Thank you for our doctors and our nurses and our health workers who are pouring their souls out. Sometimes, Lord, we are not grateful enough. We thank you for them, and we pray you continue to strengthen them as well, because they have to work so hard. So we pray that you will guide us in this, today's program. This is our prayer for Christ's sake. Viewers, as I said, invite a friend, a family member, share with us in the next half hour, as we have a chat with our beloved Dr. Lord. I'm sure he's a well-known name in the Babylonian environment. <laughs> Back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Well, we're so glad to be back with you again and we have uh, once again Dr. Adrian Lord with us and we are very grateful. I know that doctors are very stretched at this time. Well, the entire medical um, you know, you know, community is stretched at this time, and we're so glad that um, the Lord can find time to be with us for this program. He is a family physician in private practice, and he specializes in family medicine, and he's been able to, to combine academic with spirituality. He, he is a, a sort of lecturer at the University of West Indies, but also he's a by the parochial church council mm -hmm. for Christ the King and mm -hmm. the Christian minister. So he'll be able to make that, that connection. And as you know, uh, he's a, a fitness enthusiast. He has been involved with the anti doping campaign in sports for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And most recently, he has published over 153 Facebook videos uh, and postings. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and so he is indeed so on was very adept in this topic of coordinating. Oh, Lord, good to have you this. Good evening, good evening. Thanks to be here again. Yeah. 
share with us. Yes, we're talking about vaccines this afternoon. Yeah. This evening, mm-hmm. um, we want to talk a little bit about vaccines and um, it'll give us some information and you know, lots of persons out there who are a bit hesitant. Mm-hmm. Um, so we try to be able to kind of break some, some of those walls this evening. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll start off by saying that God gave us the science. Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> and we have to praise God for the science. And we have to go with the science. Vaccines are safe and effective. The vaccines have been around for years and we've used vaccines as a part of immunization against many illnesses all through our lives. Our children and adults have had various vaccines. So what about the COVID-19 vaccine? It came too quick. People (laughs) think so. Most people say that. Most people say that. (laughs) The COVID-19 vaccine as we see it, and there are several vaccines, and people, I, I may even tell you, why, why are there so many different vaccines? We now have the Johnson & Johnson coming to Barbados, or here in Barbados. When the pandemic broke out in December of 2019, in fact, it wasn't even called a pandemic at that, that time, but when it was recognized, everybody went, said, we got to fight this thing. We recognized what was happening in Wuhan, China, and the race was on to produce a vaccine that is effective with 50% efficacy is all we needed against the, the, the COVID-19 virus. SARS, secure, severe acute respiratory syndrome, COVID, CO, CO is coronavirus, V is virus two, because it's SARS-CoV-1. Right. Back in 2002, there was the SARS-CoV-1, and then there were other coronaviruses, MERS, that came along during that time. And all during that time, the whole development of a specific vaccine for the SARS-CoV-1 and for MERS were, was happening. Okay. But these things didn't reach out here. Public it wasn't, it wasn't mm-hmm. a pandemic, mm-hmm. so they didn't continue to work on it, but the body was there. We just had to put in the engine. Mm -hmm. So when we got the genomic sequence of this virus, which was released in January, that is the backbones of this particular virus, Mm -hmm. the scientists throughout the world, and there were 53 different labs, started to work on producing an effective, safe, affordable, administrable vaccine to fight this virus. any drug or vaccine that goes through various phases. So you do a phase one, which is a small study sometimes with animals and see how it reacts. And then you go phase two with a larger study to see how that reacts and see how, what the benefits and so on. And then phase three, and then you market it once it's approved by the World Health Organization or the various health authorities. With the COVID-19 vaccine, we went through all of those phases and there are still some companies going through those phases at this time. Mm -hmm. Having gone through the phases, what was different is that money came into, and any research you need money. That's right. Mm -hmm. And various foundations and governments and organizations put money into this research Mm -hmm. because we needed to do this thing. And what they did, rather than do it in series, they started to do it in parallel. So when phase one was going on and realized this thing was working good, we went to phase two. And by the time you got to phase three, even before it was approved, they started to manufacture these these, these vaccines. Mm -hmm. So we've had through 2020, thousands, hundreds of thousands of human beings trialed with these vaccines. They look at the effects Mm -hmm. and any side effects. Mm -hmm. Those that didn't make the cut, got cut off. Mm -hmm. Those that caused any problems got cut off. Mm -hmm. But these vaccines, the six so far, emerged, emerged, Mm -hmm. have been recognized and approved by the authority in the World Health Organization Mm -hmm. and have been manufactured and are out there. Mm -hmm. And what vaccines do generally is teach your system to fight off any invading organisms, be it bacteria or viruses. So you had the polio, the measles, mumps, rubella, mm-hmm. the chicken pox, the, and they even recently got a malaria vaccine, which is something that's new. Mm-hmm. Um, so over the years, 
this is what vaccines do. So they have to be effective. And therefore, they teach the body to produce antibodies that if this thief comes in there in the middle of the night, it can fight, fight arrest it, off, arrest it. <laughs> okay, yeah. so it, it does not cause the disease. It does not cause any side effects of the disease. It causes you to be effective in producing antibodies to fight off any invading organisms. And these are what these vaccines are. One more point is that there are several vaccines out there. Mm -hmm. Some were produced under different circumstances. Some work differently, but all achieve the same goal. Mm -hmm. There are some that use the new technology, the mRNA technology, like the Pfizer and Moderna, mm -hmm. and some that use the old technology, like the Sinopharm and the Johnson & Johnson. Right? And the AstraZeneca is a mixture of the old and the new, mm -hmm. and that's the one that is, is most of us have used here in Barbados. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you wanted this for the listening public, but you said the old technology and the new technology. Okay. Right? That's a little okay. description that we can right, understand right. what the, the old one is the new one. Right, the old technology mm -hmm. really is where you used to be injected with the killed, or what we, used to, we call a medical attenuated, kill virus okay. into you, mm -hmm. that virus can't do anything because it's killed already, okay. and then your body recognizes this organism and develops a reaction to it. Yeah. Okay. The new technology is where they use the messenger RNA or a spike protein. The virus has a lot of spikes on it. Mm -hmm. and use a spike protein, which is just part of the virus. Mm -hmm. In an adenovirus, which is a different virus, a killed adenovirus, which is a different vehicle, um, which then goes into your system, or the mRNA, and the mRNA, it doesn't go into your DNA, it doesn't go into your nucleus, then that then causes a reaction in your system mm -hmm. to produce the antibodies. antibodies. Yeah. Okay. So that's what the new technology is. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. You, know, you know, there's some, um, Dr. who are suggesting that the vaccines were created to fight the original um, COVID-19 but not the variant. So how would you respond to that? That is correct. But they have been found to be fairly effective against the variants. Mm -hmm. um, hence, we are still using the, 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 the vaccines that we, we always had. Mm -hmm. What we find is that it reduces the severity of disease even with the variants. Mm -hmm. We have had in Barbados as I said, over 100 deaths due to COVID-19. And most of those deaths were in the unvaccinated persons. Very few were actually fully vaccinated. And what that tells me is that the vaccine protects you against severe disease mm -hmm. and death. We have had persons who have had the vaccine, who have developed COVID-19 mild, or moderately mm -hmm. and have fully recovered. Mm -hmm. So the vaccine prevents you, protects you against severe illness and deaths, mm -hmm. generally. Yeah. However, the next argument is, but this vaccine, I take the vaccine and I still could die. Mm -hmm. We wear seat belts and we might still get access and die. <laughs> um, but no vaccine, none of the vaccines that were produced over the last hundred years Are were, 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 were perfect. Yeah, that's right. We didn't know that, mm -hmm. right? So the misinformation out there is going out saying, well, this vaccine isn't good because you can still get problems, you mm -hmm. can still die. So it decreases the severity of the disease, mm -hmm. okay? Um, it is well known. Mm -hmm. Of course, there will be breakthrough infections. Condoms burst sometimes. The pill doesn't always work. It's true. But, <laughs> you know. People still use them. People still use them. Yeah. Okay? It don't stop. As, as you said, though, I mean, there's always a risk. And yeah. I saw you're posting a risk factor for everything. The issue yes. is to find mm -hmm. the thing that has the lowest risk. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, the risk versus the benefit. The yeah. risk, the small risk of any adverse effect from the vaccine versus the big risk. Mm -hmm of what we spoke in the last program, the severe illness 
mm -hmm. COVID-19 at the time or down the line, down the road, yeah. which you might, might get. So mm -hmm. the vaccines save lives. Yeah. All right. Um, that's a good point to end this first segment on vaccine save lives. So we're going to get a little deeper into that. Okay, uh, viewers, I hope you are listening carefully. Uh, we are seeking, as I said, to um, clear up some misinformation and myths and so on. And uh, perhaps there are those who are listening who may have some, who will be hesitant. I trust that we could help to convince you otherwise. Um, we, are, we who are sitting here, we, we've all taken the step because we, we can't come and project to you a whole important is that we ourselves. The step or the job. <laughs> the job. <laughs> <laughs> The truth is, I would, if, I, if I would confess at first, I was hesitant. I prayed about it and asked God to give me the right timing, the right timing and the, and, and the right one. And once that I had that nudge to go, it's a human thing. It's something strange. You don't know about it. So I think that the hesitant, being hesitant is not unusual. Uh, and that's another thing that you have to understand. It's not unusual. So so that's my confession. <laughs> and I'll be back with you in a moment. Right? The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Well, welcome back to you, and I trust you are indeed uh, engaging us from your homes mm -hmm. in terms of this whole discussion. Now I, I, I wanted to to uh, to pitch this um, you know this question from the perspective of a public health challenge, and um, uh, I'm thinking though, the Lord, that uh, if persons are uh, to be hesitant against the vaccine, that we can find ourselves with our health system being overrun because of the severity of illnesses from COVID-19 plus all the other issues that exist mm -hmm. uh, in our, in our country. Do you want to comment on that? Yes. Right now, all hands are on deck. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. In the public sector and even the private sector. Mm -hmm. As you would have learned in the last couple of weeks, we have Dr. Dana Grandison from BAM. That's right. We have Dr. Linda Williams, Dr. Brian Charles, Dr. Hilary Moore. These are all private practitioners that are also into the thing, mm -hmm. into the whole action. And the Ministry of Health and Wellness have requested the assistance of private practitioners to help with the Come outpatients clinic yeah. at the hospital. Mm -hmm. Because the medical department at the QEH, Harrison's Point is an extension of the QEH. So right. People don't understand that. It's on the same QEH budget. Mm -hmm. So you want to get an operation, you need this up at Harrison's point, the ones that need to put you to sleep up there helping people on ventilators. That's right. <laughs> so they're asking, and they have asked, and doctors have willingly come forward. Some have volunteered, some are being paid, mm -hmm. but uh, volunteered to come and I must assist. commend you guys to do yes. yes. yeah. so, well, so they're going into the, helping the polyclinics because the doctors in the polyclinics are out there doing jabs. Mm -hmm. They're helping the absent emergency because those people are really overworked. That's right. Mm -hmm. They're helping at Harrison's point and they're helping in the outpatients clinics mm -hmm. at the hospital. That's commendable. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and that is what BAM and private practitioners in Barbados have done. And not only doctors, but of course nurses yes. and orderlies and mm -hmm. other persons have been able to come into the system mm -hmm. to help. And now the Prime Minister is talking about the Barbados Brigade, I think it's called. We're trying to bring in some nurses and doctors from the USA overseas mm -hmm. to come out for two weeks or three weeks or whatever. Yes. We gotta make sure they're fully qualified first. Well, that's and correct. Right, <laughs> I think we don't we gotta be careful of rushing the brains and not having anything not saying that they're yeah, not. You, know, you yeah. need to be careful. Yeah. And bring them in and help. Of course we've had the, the nurses from Ghana yeah. and, mm -hmm. and, and Cuba also yeah. helping. Mm -hmm. So the public health services of Barbados are being stretched. That means that the, 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 mm -hmm. the you know, we were hearing about Aunt, Dr. Anton Bess. That's true recently that is true but he was working with the hiv aids with the uh, immunization programs right. mm -hmm. with the other programs mm -hmm. of the ministry of health yeah. as this, uh, as well as lenin said his hands 
and head to the pandemic as well, mm -hmm. because that still goes on. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that we get everything still happening because mm -hmm. of the effect of this on our public health in Barbados. Mm -hmm. You know, dengue, the, 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 the rains are, are here. Mm -hmm. You know, debushing, all that is Ministry of Health. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right? right. The, the, the mosquito. Uh, uh, eradication program, all that is Ministry of Health. Mm -hmm. um, the looking at the, the, the various nurseries, children's nurseries, and right. so all that's being compromised at this time. At this time, right? Yes. And mm -hmm. therefore, it could affect. We, we have a good standard of health in Barbados, and therefore we need to put all our heads and hands to the plow to help to fight off this this pandemic mm -hmm. to relieve some of the stresses that mm -hmm. are on the system. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so. Yeah. So vaccine then is our best defense mm -hmm. um, to preserve and protect our public health system. I really want to, yeah. to, to say that though because I think we need to hear that, that you know, we do not want a case to occur or a point to be reached where we become, I mean, the doctors and nurses and, and the public community are doing a I do a, a fantastic job with their resources. I mean, I mean, as you said, first of all, mm -hmm. To do the services, they're engaging for a lot of, so we're, we're, we're really grateful for, mm. the, for their effort. Mm. Uh, but we really want to be responsible, though, in terms mm. of making sure that we do our part to create that wall mm -hmm. of protection of our public health system. Mm -hmm. Yes, vaccines are an additional level of protection. protection. Mm -hmm. Last year, we said wear a mask, wash your hands, and watch your distance. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, like first time we said, you don't need to wear masks at all. Yes. Right? Just mm -hmm. keep your distance. And then we say, you wear cloth masks, not surgical masks. Now we say you can wear cloth, surgical masks. Now we're saying wear all the time. So mm -hmm. it is a fluid situation. It's dynamic. Uh, uh, yes. And dynamic. And that is what people don't understand. Yes. Yeah. If you, I did 153 videos. If you look back and see my first video, what I said then might not be applicable now. No, exactly. Okay? Yeah. And that is what people, and this is what the anti vaxxers are holding on right. to. Right. And that is what is causing anxiety and fear. Because we said one thing then and said yeah. one thing yeah. now. Because we're learning, You're learning as we're going on. It's a new virus. It's new. And it's new. Yeah. new. It's yeah. called novel coronavirus. Remember that's what it was first called? Mm -hmm. The novel coronavirus. Yeah. So the vaccines are additional level of protection. Mm -hmm. So, you wash your hands, you keep your distance, you wear your mask, you avoid crowds, okay? And if you look at that Swiss cheese model that they, they show you, the vaccines is the, the other level of protection that's there. Mm -hmm. Keep proper ventilation. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. home at me, I have a, no, I don't have a dog, my wife has a dog. <laughs> <laughs> that is one level of protection, okay? I have a garage gate. That's another level of protection. Right. Mm -hmm. I have double locks on all my doors. Mm -hmm. That's another level of protection. We come on, on, on national TV, so I can't tell. <laughs> <all that. laughs> but I also have burglar bars. Okay. That's another level of protection. Okay. But you know what? I have security cameras too. Yeah. Okay. Knock on wood. So you have protected me. Take so precaution. Far, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. But. You can't drop your guard, and that's what's happening. People are dropping the guard, mm -hmm. although they're vaccinated. Because you're vaccinated, you still have to do all of those things. Mm -hmm. So every night I go home, I got to make sure I do do all those things mm -hmm. to make sure I'm protected. Mm -hmm. Same with prayers too. Yeah. But <laughs> but you know, so yeah. that is additional. So the vaccines are an additional level of protection. Mm -hmm. Nothing is 100. percent But if you add up all of those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got a good chance of, of good protection. Well, well, what do you say, Dr. Lord, to those out there who are listening, but um, are hesitant? Mm -hmm. As all of us would have gone through, go with the saints. Mm -hmm. Speak to your God, of course, and get mm -hmm. his guidance, right. but also speak to your medical, medical. practitioners right. mm -hmm. who were trained. We didn't learn about this thing by sitting out in the toilet with a cell phone, <laughs> Googling, right? That's what people call research. I researched it. Mm -hmm. You know what they do? Sit down in the toilet <laughs> with a cell phone. That's research. That's not research. That's Googling it. <laughs> Googling. <laughs> and you could research and get whatever you want to get, That's right. whatever That's right. thing. Mm -hmm. Research some of those people that are saying some of those That's things. Correct. That's correct. Right? Mm -hmm. So... <sighs> I have HIV, so can I get it? Go and check and see what the 
World Health Organization or the, the HIV AIDS Foundation has said about COVID-19 and HIV. Mm -hmm. Don't go and listen to Dr. Boobo, Dr. Google or Dr. Boobo, mm -hmm. what he said. Or if you see a Dr. Farley out there saying something, Google him and see who he is. Who's, he? Who's Dr. Farley? Yeah, right? I agree. He is a medical Dr. Farley or PhD Dr. Farley or Dr. Farley with an honorary. Vivian Richards, Sir Vivian Richards is no Dr. Sir Vivian Richards. He just got an honorary doctorate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he is now Dr. Mm -hmm. Stetson Richard. Doctor. Mm -hmm. Right? But check and see who these people really are. Mm -hmm what their reputation is before accepting. So initially, I was getting a lot of information, questions, people sending me videos. What do you think about that? And I, I didn't understand that this was the, um, all this information, that misinformation that was coming out. So I would say, but you go to school. Because it was obvious that it didn't make sense. But I didn't realize that this was the beginning of what was going on. A flood. A flood. I think, I think the, 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 the Society is flooded with yeah. misinformation. Uh, and, 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 and because it's so accessible as well. Yeah, it's accessible. Yes. Yes. You know, uh, you go on your phone, you go um, on your computer, yes. your laptop, and yeah. everything is right there. Yeah. As opposed to struggling to kind of make yeah. sense of, of, of Let me just have uh, two minutes to go. That's where your final comment, mm -hmm. and then we have a camera. Well, to <laughs> don't hesitate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't procrastinate. Yeah. Don't wait. Go with the science. Vaccinate. Yeah. I think that we need to. You remain. You remain. We, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need to do that. As well. <laughs> yeah. We, we need to. We need to support our society and our governments, yeah. our people. There's distrust. A lot of distrust that's out right. there. Yeah, that's it. But accept the information for what it is. Mm -hmm. And if you. If you have any queries, speak to someone who might know. Mm -hmm. And vaccines, as I said, vaccines save lives. Mm -hmm. And okay. we have shown that. Well, Laura, thank you so much for sharing with us. You know, you're a very busy man. We appreciate the sacrifice you have made to share with us on the Nazarene Family Forum. May God bless you and yes. your team as you continue to help heal this land. Thank you very much. I want to say thanks to the entire um, team in terms of public health. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to really, really uh, affirm your work, you know, this evening. And uh, mm -hmm. if you can up our hands together, you know, well, of course, get, of course, uh, yeah, rose and round of, of affirmation for the hard work for what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. may God bless you, may God prosper mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. as you help our nation mm -hmm. and our world. Yes. So, so this is mm -hmm. a very d difficult and mm -hmm. uh, challenging virus. Shall we pray, Father? We give you thanks today for your grace and we pray father for those who might be hesitant lord today with reference to uh the vaccination we pray for wisdom we pray for direction we pray father they will seek out uh, the correct information to make an informed decision gracious god we give you thanks for the lord and for all of his colleagues who are working assiduously uh, to combat this virus bless him and uh, bless Father, our nation at this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you again, Dr. Lord. You're welcome. Helen Kellen, blessings on you. Thank you, listeners, for sharing with us. And uh, don't hesitate. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> <laughs>